structures we are going to study right okay so what are all the things we are going to study today I means the thing is virus behavior right in that we will be having infection replication then how they are going to have their movement within the cell right so <clears throat> actually all together these are all a simultaneous process okay so especially just like in other organism how we are able to differentiate but here it is not that much differentiated once it enters it will try to get established then it will start uh, infecting okay but we will try to decipher each one by one okay then followed by uh, what are all the histopathological changes that means either a cell modification or a tissue modification when a virus enters into the cell right then inclusion bodies inclusion uh, bodies means what are all those things and how they are going to benefit how they are going to affect the plant okay and what are all their particular or characteristic structures we are going to study then transmission so with respect to virus vector relationship we are going to have a glance on that right so these are all the things i will try to cover within two hours okay so coming to infection <laughs> infection if you just uh, scientifically see what do you mean by infection means it is nothing but establishment of the pathogen right within a cell or plant whatever you can call it as so it is a establishment that means a virus is can able to uh, proceed its either replication right or its reproduction whatever you can call it as so it is now going to have fully overtaken the tissue that's why the establishment of the pathogen will take place then only we can call it as a infection simply if it is entering and staying inside means we, we won't calling it as a infection okay it should get established inside the cell then only we will call it that as an infection that means now it got the uh, key to open the lock okay so simply if it is coming to the house means it doesn't matter that it is going to infect right so it has to recognize so everything will be there then it has to overcome the uh, what you can call it as defenses uh, given by the plant right so there are so many steps how a uh, organism can overcome those things right so if you just take into the look of the infection simply you can just take out as the first will be entry the pathogen or the virus will be made an entry right then after that it will just what it will do just it will go for uncoating okay the same step you will be noticing in the replication also right that's why i told it is it is not not that much differentiated with respect to the virus right so the once the entry is made okay as you know that the virus are obligate in nature and it is a passively entered rather than active penetration right so insect will make the right so insect will make the uh, virus to enter into the particular cell or the host then the entry will be made then the uncoating will be there right so once the uncoating means say you can call it as even dna viruses right or even rna viruses right either it can be a round or you can call it as isohedral right or even the flexious right or rod shaped anything right so inside that the genome will be there particular virus so it will be uncoated right so each virus will have their own different strategy okay so if you take uh, tmv it will have spirosomes and even uh, con transitional uncoating so like that for each pathogen it will be each virus there will be different uh, set of mechanism okay so i am not going to that much deep so i will try to cover in a superficial manner okay so after uncoating what it will take just it will <coughs> release the either rna okay usually it will be in mrna stage okay or it will, you can call it as plus right that means mrna means you know that it can able to produce the it can go for the transcript or uh, translation and it can produce the proteins right then there will be either dna right so like this the with respect to each virus they will uncoat that code uh, code protein right <laughs> thereafter simultaneously there will be translation and if it is mrna then transcription right if it is dna it will go for rt right that is sorry it will go for production of mrna right then it will go for translation and protein so like that it will be otherwise it will go for directly replication right so like that there are set of procedure so this is the way how it will try to uh, proceed okay then after that finally once the replication occurs then what it will does 
it will directly assemble and this genome whatever the respective genomes are there that will be coated into the code protein right then it will be released okay so after the code protein either it should enter into the other cell or it should be taken into the out of the cell to the our uh, vector body right so either of the case is possible so if it is entering into the other cell means the mechanism will be different if it is entering into the insect body means the mechanism will be different so like that each step will be having their own strategy okay so these are all the set uh, stages or the total uh, steps what it what it will follow to get established inside the a particular cell right so after this infection as you know that once it get established of course there will be symptoms right and most probably the virus will not try to kill the plant because you know that it is a obligate obligate means it wants to live or it is totally depend on on the particular host right it is an obligate means it is completely dependent on the host so that's why if the host is died means the pathogen will also going to die that's why it will try to maintain the host condition normally okay so anyway it will be trying to ex extract the nutrient right so thereby the pathogen vigor sorry the plant vigorness will be or the health will be deteriorated but still it will tr try not to kill the plant the same case you can notice in case of rust and even the uh, powdery mildew right so like that so once it will try to do the same thing so in between these things so these are the set of uh, steps or whatever you can call it as with respect to infection right so even the plant once the pathogen or the virus is entered right so once the virus is entered even plants will try to evade that pathogen okay so it is just nothing but defense mechanism right lot of defense mechanism will be there from the host side right so it, either it may be non host resistant right non host resistant is nothing but say a virus which should be particular to a particular cultivar or particular host right if it is coming say i, I can tell that a rice virus or tungro virus can't infect wheat right because it is showing the wheat is showing non host resistance right that means the susceptible factor the susceptible factors in the wheat are not there with respect to the tungro virus that's why it is unable to infect the particular non host right so this is a simple why it is not able to affect the other host right so like that the non host resistance will be there that, that is the primary criteria then followed by as you know that even the vector will in any way make the entry for the virus but still there will be lot of recognition thing should be going inside the cell so the recognition should takes place otherwise the pathogen will unable to as get established then followed by you know that <clears throat> there are so many pathways like salicylic acid pathway right or even it can produce hormones like gibberellic acid right then ethylene so so many signaling pathways will be there which will try to trigger the defense mechanism by to uh, evade the pathogen establishment or virus establishment okay so it should overcome all these things step all these steps in infection then only it will get established okay so this is about the infection right okay so <clears throat> coming to its replication so anyway pathogen has entered and uh, get established right so in between that there should be replication also so replication is nothing but it is trying to make the copies of it okay just how the pathogens are producing like uh, insect or the fungi whatever you can call it how they are producing next generation daughter cells the same way the virus has to multiply right so then only the uh, certain abundance will be there then only it can cause a deterministic symptom or the infection right so for everything now we are calculating with respect to covid we are calculating what is the uh, virus load right with respect to whatever you can call it ct value when you are going for uh, uh, sorry test right so pcr test when you are going for pcr test they will check the what is the ct value those things so for each thing the virus load should be determined then only we can tell it as whether the pathogen is able to cause a uh, infection or not right so like that for each pathogen or virus there should be some load so for that there should be proper replication or duplication right so if you take down the replication 
how the virus is getting replicated inside the particular host right the same thing so <clears throat> let me give one important thing as you know that the bacteriophages are the virus right only need cell membrane receptors because you know that it is making a kind of active entry right so it will sit on the cell and the tail will be there and this will be the head and it will make the entry of the genome through then after it will become a ghost cell right right this might you might have studied in the chapters right so the same way the bacteriophage requires cell membrane receptors to make an entry into the host except this all the rest of the virus does not require cell membrane receptors right so you should make note of that so that's why the viruses especially the plant viruses whatever you can call it as so they don't need the receptors or cell membrane receptor this is the basic gateway okay right so yeah so how it it will make an entry means say the insect will be there right so insect will passively make the entry for the virus then it will enter then the same thing uncoating will be there right then uncoating as i told there will be different set of viruses either it may be rna right or dna right so if it is rna means either single stranded rna or double stranded rna right the same way it might be single stranded dna or double stranded dna right so like this it will be there so for each kind of viruses it will differ okay even you in rna you will have negative strand rna right so for each viruses the process of replication will be differing so if you take on take on the tmv right right so if you take on the tmv how it is going to replicate inside the cell right so as you know that if you take down the genome of the particular tmv so genome is nothing but just like a, a genetic content right so it will have a information for particular functionality of the virus and even the replication of the virus that's what the genome will consist of so for that it should have information right so if you take down the virus as you know that it is a tmv is a rod shaped virus right so it can be divided into certain region right so you can call it as this one as replication associated region right replication associated region and this one this one can be movement protein right and this one can be code protein so that means this region will code for the code protein region okay this one will be helpful in the movement protein right this one will be helpful for the what you can call it as uh, replication right so after that it is a it is having a rna like structure okay that to trn trna like structure okay at the end like this right so a trna like structure right so like that it will be there if you just take down the uh, molecular weight of that so it will this will be 183 kilo dalton right then this will be i think yeah 30 kilo dalton then it is 17 kilo dalton so this is the tmv genome right so based on this how what we can decipher means so this is 5 prime end and this is 3 prime end right so as i told each will have their own specific set of uh, functionality right so this will code for code protein that means this or inside that rna will be there right so that means say this is the rna so this code protein what it does it will code the rna okay so this is how the code protein and movement protein what it does means just it will carry over the genome into the next cell that's the function of the movement protein right so of course the replication associated protein or the region what it does means it will code for the pathogen or virus to get replicated so of course the procedure is just it will make an entry right after entry it will go for uncoating right after uncoating as i said uh, there are so many strategies like it will make streptosome right or even sorry 
on translational disassembly okay so it is nothing but how the code protein is removed that is the strategy okay for each, for each thing there will be set of strategy so that's how the code protein will be removed then after that so if it is tm tmv means it is of course RNA, right? Single stranded RNA. So the single stranded RNA, it will act as an mRNA, right? That means it can able to produce the uh, protein, right? So it will directly act as a mRNA, right? So it will be acting as a tem template for the complementary strand synthesis. So with the help of with the help of RNA dependent RNA polymerase, right? So it will just produce the negative strand so this is positive strand right this is positive strand this positive strand will produce the negative strand right so i will write this positive strand here okay so see this is the positive strand so the positive strand will be here and it will be producing the negative strand so now it is called as this both will be called as right replicative intermediate because why we are calling it intermediate means this is the this is not the final uh, genome to be coated in the code protein right that's why we are calling it as a replicative intermediate which is going to play a key role in multiplication of the further copies so that's why we are calling it as a replicative intermediate with respect to uh, tmv right so the plus strand will be there anyway with the help of rna dependent rna polymerase it will be trying to uh, make a negative strand that will be nothing but complementary strand to the particular plus mRNA, right? So once it is done, so what it does means this negative strand is there, right? It will produce lot of positive strand, right? Okay, it will produce positive strand. Okay, so there will be lot of copies. So replicates will help in the cop making the copies of the positive strand, right? So so many positive strands will be made. At the same time, simultaneous, <clears throat> simultaneously, this positive strands will help in the production of, or this may be help in, helping in the production of code protein, right? So this will be helping in the production of, because as you know that the positive strand can directly produce, but the negative strand has, does not have the capability, right? So this will start producing the code protein, right? Then this code protein, after the production of code protein, what it does means, So directly, whatever the positive strand pro product, uh, positive strand mRNA are produced, that will be coated, right? Like this, it will be coated each and every strand, positive strand. Now it has become a complete virion particle. So virion particle is nothing but a complete virus particle which has the capability to infect a host okay so if you just take out the mrna and if you infect it does it will not going to infect okay so because it needs a complete structure means in cell okay artificially you can do but in na na naturally it doesn't work so it needs a complete virion particle to exist its life so uh, after the production of these things okay the virion particles will be produced and it will it has the ability to go and infect the next cell so this is how the replication takes place with respect to TMV, right? Any doubt? If you have any doubt, just ask me. Any doubt? So from where is the code protein coming? As I told, see, the, the mRNA strand is there. It is ha having the ability to go for translation also. So uh, that's why I told the transcription and translation will be simultaneously happening. So this translation will make the production of the code protein and this code protein will do or it will go and combine or it will go and put the whatever the new strands are produced or replicative strands are produced and it will just go and coat this genome. So now it has become a complete virus particle. That's it. Anything else? If you have doubts, ask me. Okay. So, and the, what is the role of RDRP? Like it, it is just like a polymerase, yeah, right? Strand also. Sorry. 
your voice was breaking just tell what me what is the role of idrp sir what is actually role See, it is a rna dependent rna polymerase so i think you might have studied about the polymerase right it is nothing but it's trying to uh, do replication okay that's like you will be in polymerase you will be having what you can call it as some um, replicates right so replicate means it will make a copies of the particular strand that's why the replicates comes and the polymerase will help in the production of new strands okay so both are a, a, a replicates will be in a part of polymerase only okay so that's why the replicates and transcriptase both will try to have a complete package for the replication that's it you can hardly if you are unable to get that just you take it as it, it will be helpful in the replication okay or making the copies of a new strand that's it the negative strand is made through, with the help of rtrp yeah 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 okay okay sir thank you yes. any other doubt sir means uh, positive strands does not able to produce replicates so that why they cannot uh, produce uh, coat protein sir sorry no see the replication means anyway one strand is there for production of next see the same thing is the positive can't uh, go for production of another positive strand right so it needs a complementary to produce the positive right it's just like you can term it as plus and minus like male and female right so the plus means you can consider as a male and it needs a female right the same thing it will try to produce a complementary here the complementary can term it as a female right then it will start producing the both will try to produce the the negative strand will start produce the its complementary that its complementary is nothing but positive only so the multiple positive strands will be keep on producing then it will start production of the uh high high number of what you can call it as strands that is nothing but a huge uh, multiplication or busting of the virus load then the code proteins will be there that will combine just make a assembly or it will just cover the particular new production of strands and it will give rise to a complete virion that's it okay anything else so this okay so shall i move to next virus i hope you understood everything with, with this okay so with respect to <clears throat> tmb most probably they will be asking tmb right so you should know about this particularly so beyond this nothing is there okay so the simple thing is just it will make an entry then it will uncoat okay so if you want to study about both uh, these uh, steps with respect to mechanism everything you will have roger hull book okay so you can have but uh, it is a very bulky book so if you want you can just go through that roger hall plant virology by roger hall okay so in uh, full molecular level he has given those things so just it will make an entry then uncoating will be there then particular virus will act as a positive mrna strand right simultaneously with the help of uh, what is that rna dependent rna polymerase it will start producing the negative strand that is complementary to the whatever it is right then by uh, next at the same time it will start production of the coat proteins and this negative strand will try to produce the more number of its complementary right so that means more of positive strands will be produced when the negative strand is produced the same way when uh, the positive is produced that positive will, will also try to go for production of sorry the positive will be try to uh, covered by the whatever the coat protein produced so like that the cycle will be keep on moving right so this is the replication with respect to tmb right then coming to cauliflower mosaic virus so i have dealt with the rna right so let me deal with the dna also how the dna virus is getting replicated inside the host right so what is the condition of cauliflower mosaic virus is it single strand or double strand tell me anyone double stranded good okay so double stranded dna yes okay so it is a double stranded dna right so the same procedure okay so first it has to enter through the door right there will be entry then uncoating right so after uncoating say this is the host right this so is can host. you please tell like uncoating like See. the coat protein is getting separated from the genetic material 
yeah is, is uh, yes 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 very good so the same thing so if i want to tell it simply means say this is the tmv right so tmv is having genetic material inside it so what it does say now striposome it is a mechanism how the uncoating will takes place okay so the part the coat protein is nothing but it is a protein molecule right it will be in a capsomers so you can call it as a capsomers like this okay so it will be like this so how it will be done means just like a zipping okay so it will just keep on moving in a unidirection so that the rna will be coming outside okay because simply we can do but this is not a the virus does not have a energy metabolism right it does not have any energy metabolism but still it can able to operate specifically so that should be appreciated that means how it is doing means with the help of striposome nothing but once it is this is going moving and the rna will be coming outside and it will become a a striposomes like this uh, coat protein will go and uh, what you can call collect in a one side that, that's why the structure will look like a striposome okay that means just like a, an hammer a bulk of capsomer will be at one side and rna will be coming outside so this is how the uh, uncoating will takes place okay so this is with respect to tmv the same way each vi virus will have their own strategies okay but still these are all under research condition okay but they have identified with respect to tmv so cauliflower mosaic virus right so single strand sorry double stranded dna right so say this is the host so there will be entry of the particular cauliflower mosaic virus particle right so once the entry has been made with the help of a feed right then it will go for the uncoating okay that means say circular rhizohedral particle will have genome right so that will be separated and it will release only double stranded dna genome right so this is called uncoating so once this uncoating is over then see this is a i told this is a host okay you can consider the entire screen as a plant cell right so inside that say this is the nucleus okay so you can consider this one as a nucleus so now this virus particle will directly enter into the nucleus right so it will enter into the cytoplasm whatever i told with respect to tmv it will stick on to the cytoplasm right so most probably you can consider okay the broadly that most of the viral rna virus will stick on to the cytoplasm as their replicative site or the viroplasm site but <clears throat> with respect to dna viruses they will try to enter into the nucleus nucleus right so the uncoating has taken place then it has entered into the nucleus once it has entered into the nucleus it will be disintegrated or you can tell it as it will be uh, the circular nature will be released and with the help of histone okay you know that the plant cell will have the histone right chromosome will have the histones right so the histone what it does it will try to make i will just make a magnification image of this so this you consider this is entire taking place in the nucleus so what it does the dna will be there right so that will be super coiled like this means it will make a mini chromosome the whatever the virus are there dna content that will be coiled like anything and it will make a mini chromosomes of particular virus right so the super coiling will takes place with the help of histone this is it right then it will go for transcription right then it will go for transcription and it will produce key components as it will go for transcription right then it will produce three key components as 35s rna that is one component and it will produce another component as 19s rna okay so the dna was there that was transcribed transcribed then that transcribed thing will go and go and produce the two kinds of components that is 35s rna and 19s rna okay these kind of two molecules mrna molecules will be produced right so what it does means this 35s rna now the nucleus whatever the function that were taking place it is over in the nucleus okay now it has to go out so it came out okay this also 
came out both the both the rnm verticals it came out right then what it does means uh, 19s rna it's a simple okay so say one protein molecule it will be produced okay you can call it as a p6 so that is the protein which is produced by the 19s rna that is the only function of this 19s rna the rest of the bulky things will be handled by the certifiers rna that big molecule right so what it does directly it will come out right then say this is the certifiers rna right so once it came out then with the help of reverse transcriptase you must be knowing the rt right what is the function of rt reverse transcriptase please tell me anyone what is the function of reverse transcriptase so making strands of dna converts the rna into dna very good okay so it will convert the rna into the single stranded dna okay so the dna will be produced okay the dna will be produced at the same time whatever the 30s 35s rna is there i told you right the replication and the translation will be going simultaneously so that 35s rna will try to make the go for the translation right so it will go for the translation it will produce the more proteins that proteins you can consider they have classified as p1 p2 p3 p4 and p5 totally p6 are there but as you know that p6 will be produced by the 19s rna right and here the p up to p5 that will be handled by the 35s rna so inside that okay a p4 will be code protein okay so p4 will be code protein right so the rest of the proteins will be produced by like this then the rt will produce the dna right so this dna is nothing but single uh, standard then that single strand will be coiled and it will it will be coiled with the help of uh, replicate uh, circulative replication okay or rolling circle mechanism okay don't worry about that it is nothing but it's a mechanism that's it so it will try to make a another copy around it like this so it will become a double stranded right so now the double stranded dna will be produced right so once the double stranded is produced then this proteins okay it will come and try to especially uh, this whatever uh, you can call it as rna dna is there right so it will come and okay like this okay it will come and go to the particular genome right so like this the many number of copies will be there so the crowd protein will come and go to the particular double stranded dna so now the viral particle is ready for the dispatch so this is how the infection will takes place with respect to double stranded dna any doubt if you have any doubt just ask so use of the other proteins see that's what the use of the other protein you can call it as <clears throat> someone will be moment protein right uh, the first one will be you can call it as a moment protein right then the second one will be helper protein helper protein means nothing but it will helps in the uh, helps for the aphid okay to get recognition okay so the aphid will come and it will try to recognize the particular virus right if say 10 virus are there if it is a Uh, tungra virus means of course aphid can't uh, take the tungra virus right but if the cauliflower mosaic virus is there means it will have a helper protein which will have a recognition particle to get attached to the particular aphid so this helper virus will help in the particular uh, recognition then third one you can call it as nuclear binding domain okay so whatever the nucleus is there it will go and bind to the particular domain of the nucleus right so either for the infection or either for the recognition so like that and fourth as i told it is a code protein and six is they are telling it is mainly for the transcription enhancer okay but still it is under question mark but you can take it as a they have made it as a transcription enhancer the function of the p6 okay so that's what with respect to virus the whatever the research they are doing it is even under research okay so whatever the information they have generated that will be produced on the paper that's it okay so these are all the function of and uh, p5 like that it's a nothing but this rt production that's it anything else any other doubt so i think 
i hope you understood the entire process of replication right chale move to next topic okay so moment is nothing but <clears throat> the same thing so now the replication has taken place right so the complete establishment replication everything has taken place now the pathogen has to infect the new cell so how it is going to infect the new cell so as you know that the major component which will be helping in the movement of the virus is plasmodesmata okay through this only say this is a cell right there will be plasmodesmata column right so based on this entry okay so right so this is a cell so it will make a entry like this so it is nothing but a channel okay so get into the other cell so say if i want to tell about the it actually it is in through either tubular okay, either to tubular or uh, non tubular form okay it's nothing but say simply either virus will be coated in a tube then it will be transported that is called tubular way of mechanism where the virus get transmitted otherwise the virus will not be under uh, coated in the tube and it will not be transmitted just like say pipe and inside this pipe the virus will be there and it will be transmitted if that is the case then it will be tubular form if the virus is not inside the pipe then you can call it as a non tubular this is a simple way uh, how the virus will be usually transmitted if i want to give an example of tmv say it is a non tubular form that means say the if the virus wants to get enter into the next cell means say this this is the cell this already infected okay so this is this is so this is the new cell now it has it has to go to the next new cell so what it does means to the help of plasmodesmata first this is the genome right mrna strand so the mrna strand will be now the coating has not taken place okay so the lot of mrna strand produced after replication so now what it does the mrna will be coated by the movement protein right so this is how the each coat proteins will be helpful in the transmission so the movement protein will be produced right then some riboproteins of the host also helps okay some riboproteins okay will also help in the attachment that means the genome of the particular tmv is sandwiched between the movement protein and even the riboproteins of the host right so then the same thing will be transported through the plasmodesmata right so even uh, that plasmata plasmodesmata will be regular regularized by the callus deposition if the callus is more means of course it will not make the plasmodesmata to expand right that means just like a uh, i can what you can call it as a gum or whatever so it will just paste it so that it will give a pressure so that the plasmodesmata will become very thin and it will not allow the any entry of the macromolecules right so plasmodesmata is meant for the exchange of the particular macromolecules of the host but through that this virus is taking a back door okay that is a simple uh, way so uh, this is how the coat protein Ah, uh, sorry. Movement protein uh, one will try to enter into the next cell, and this is how the entry will be made with respect to TMV. But if you take the tubular form, say this is a tube, right? So inside that, say the virus particle will be there with the coat protein. Okay, here I told only genome, no coat protein, no coat protein, right? But here. with the coat protein the virus will be transported so this is a tube and with this tube the plas this will make an entry through the plasmodesmata and it will be transported to the new cell so this is how so this you can take it as this one as the uh, tmv where it will be doing and <coughs> here tsw just once take it the full form okay so i forgot this so tsw will be the where it will make the yeah sorry tomato spotted wilt virus okay so that will be helpful or that will be the having the strategy through where that tube, tube formation will be happening and that will be transported across the new cell right okay so if you have any doubt just ask me or we will start with the histopathological changes
okay then i will start okay so what do you mean by histopathological changes so here anyway virus has entered right after virus entry it has to show some actions right so the whatever the activity is doing like say replication or symptom expression or even the whatever you can call it as production of other uh, modification of the host system everything is their action right for that every action there should be reaction right that reaction will be shown in case of histopathological changes that means whatever the virus is doing so for that the reaction will be modification of the host system that is what the histopathological changes will have that means the tissue will be having modification or the cell will have modification or even the uh, metabolism will be interrupted but here we are mainly concerned about the structural integrity or the tissue tissue uh, deformation so inside that we will have metabolism right but still an outer look we will be morely concerned about the tissue and the cell metabolism or the cell structure will be disrupted okay so if you want to take so now anyway the virus has entered into the host cell right now what it does means it will try to modify the particular cell so what it will try to modify means either it may be organelle right or it may be cell wall whatever may be or even the protoplast so everything will be try to modify so if you start with the cell organelles right so say nucleus particular virus will have particular organelle to be targeted right so the viruses which are targeting the nucleus means you can take it as a t nation mosaic virus okay so what it does means in it will enter into the nucleus and it will disintegrates the dis integrates the nucleolus right so inside the nucleus nucleolus will be there right so circular nucleus will be disintegrated right and it will make a vesicles in the nuclear pore okay so that is the two function uh, two modification what the p nation mosaic virus will make okay it will disintegrate the nucleolus and it will try to make a pore in the particular nuclear uh, nucleus okay then this about the p nation mosaic virus then if you take out the next as you know that you can consider or you can generalize that most of the dna virus will only disintegrate or it will try to modify the nucleus part most of the rna will try to modify the cytoplasm or other uh, organelles okay so you can just have a general idea about that okay there will be exception but still i am telling so but generalized statement you can give so when it comes to gemini virus so it will also do the same so it will just disintegrate the nucleolus right then if you write if you take the poti virus that's why i told generalized statement you can take but still you see poti virus is a single stranded rna right but it is also doing a plate like structures okay a plate like structures inside the nucleolus okay so these are all about the modification or tissue or organelle or whatever the cell modification taking place okay inside the particular part right so this about the nucleus then coming to chloroplast right so if you are coming to chloroplast you can take down turnip yellow mosaic virus right so turnip yellow mosaic virus what it does it will make a cavities or vesicles inside the chloroplast okay so that is the characteristics of turnip yellow mosaic virus means okay just listen then the most of the mosaic disease whatever you can call it as cauliflower mosaic right or even the cucumber mosaic virus so this mosaic disease will decrease the starch content so most of the mosaic disease because you know that the yellow will be there so there will be there will not be any chances for the production of photosynthesis right or food so there will be decrease of the starch production and if you take out the 
beat curly top virus there will be increase in the starch production okay so mechanism i too don't know but still the chances of wherever they have analyzed that the beat curly top virus present in the host the starch production was abundant okay so one logic statement is you can make it out that it won't affect the leaf part right so as the name only suggests beat curly top so it can <clears throat> avoid the decrease of the starch but the increase of the starch maybe it should be under research okay so this is about the chloroplast so if we take down the mitochondria okay so what are the virus which are affecting the mitochondria means the big one is tobacco rattle virus okay so as you know that it is a nematode transmitted right so it will affect the mitochondria okay it will disrupt the mitochondrial activity then the major one the cell wall so what are the virus in infecting the cell wall means this one you can call it as a most of the local lesion or uh, <clears throat> the virus which are causing some necrosis those can be taken into the account so tmv can cause disruption in the cell wall right then apart from that it can do plasmodesmotal protrusion as i told you right the pla the, pla the expansion and the uh, congestion of the plasmodesmota will help in the movement of the particular macromolecule or even the viruses right so here the plasmodesmotal plasmodesmata right so the protrusion will be there right then there can be dense matrix okay so it can be junk matrix it that will be deposited so that either it will be bulged so that the in integrity of the cell wall will be disrupted so like this it will try to modify the host system okay so these are all about the particular histopathological changes or organelle modification by the particular uh, virus right so if you take out the what are all the structures induced by the viruses structures induced by viruses okay you can term it as in cytoplasm usually in cytoplasm right so it can be right so the structures can be virus aggregates okay it can be virus aggregates right or it may be protein aggregates right or it can be modification of organelles okay so these are all the modification of structure which can be it may be a virus derived or it can be virus and the plant host derived both it can be there or directly virus can uh, try to modify the particular organelle structure right so these are all the activities a virus can induce so and even one more thing is even it can create a viroplasm can anyone tell what is the meaning of viroplasm can anyone i think i have told you so it is nothing but a place or area where the replication and the assembly of the virus is taking place you can tell it as a particular virus uh, area okay it's house so that one you can call it as viroplasm right okay okay so what do you mean by inclusion bodies can anyone can anyone what do you mean by inclusion bodies please answer anyone okay so see inclusion bodies are nothing but they are actually it can be viral or viral plus host derived material okay so the origin of the inclusion body sir either it may be viral derived or it can be viral plus host derived right so this is called inclusion bodies and the thing is whenever a virus will infect it will try to uh, leave some identity okay so while infecting right it can tell it as a by product right you can simply you can call it as a by product so through that where 
it will be called as inclusion body for particular virus there will be particular kind of byproducts it will be producing right it is not exactly byproduct but i am trying to make you understand so that you can consider us like that right so each virus will have their own way of production of inclusion bodies then based on that where it is going to uh, useful means we are easily ident we can easily identify whether the virus is this one or not because you know that virus particle is around 200 nanometer so it is very small size anyway you can't uh, search through the microscope right but it should be go through gone through the electron microscopy right so if you able to see the inclusion bodies under the normal microscope means you can easily identify it. okay this is the this virus uh, uh, the particularly present so this is the uh, tool where we can identify the particular virus okay so means barely we can identify whether it is a tmv or whether it is a uh, what do you can call cmv or poti virus so easily we can identify that is the one thing so it may be viral derived or the viral or host derived right so what is the help or the what is the use of this inclusion bodies with respect to virus anyway virus is producing a inclusion bodies right for everything there should be purpose right so without that it doesn't use even the evolution has taken place like that right so wherever the uh, use is there then only uh, it is not 100% but that you can consider as 99% right so but for this virus whatever the inclusion bodies are produced it will stop the replication not exactly stop it will stop the over replication okay because you know that say a cell is there right this is the host and the virus is getting replicated so if it is keep on replicating means what will happen the cell will die right if the cell dies means of course the pathogen or the virus is going to die but this thing should not happen that's why the obligate nature of the pathogen exists so what it does means it will produce lot of inclusion bodies so that this inclusion bodies is nothing but i told either it may be viral viral means whatever the virus are there na it will just aggregate like this okay this is called inclusion bodies or it may be viral and host so viral genome is there along with that ribosome or it may be uh, nucleolus so like that it will keep on adding so this is called aggregate so when this when these aggregates are formed it will not make the cell to replicate more because here further either genome is not there or the particular organal is not organal is, or you can call it as organal or a particular molecules for the synthesis of this uh, infection right so that is not there so when that is not there means of course the replication will excess replication will be stopped and that if the excess replication is stopped the plant will be normal right means that will not going to die so that this is how the equilibrium will be maintained when the inclusion bodies are produced inside the particular cell right so this is the use of inclusion body so okay so anyway we know uh, thought about the inclusion bodies and their structures but how the inclusion bodies will look like right so if you take down the poti virus right it will produce a characteristic pinwheel structures like this it will produce inside if you just take out the tissue it will more or roughly it will be like pinwheel structure that's why we can ca call it as the poti virus will produce pinwheel structures of inclusion bodies right if you take the rhabdovirus okay if you take out the rhabdovirus it will produce a bullet shaped inclusion bodies like this a bullet shaped inclusion body in the nuclear pore right this is the nucleus and this is the pore inside this it will produce the inclusion bodies so if you see the nucleus right under microscope you can check whether on in magnifying microscope okay so you can check whether the inclusion bodies are there or not so you can easily confirm okay rhabdovirus is present right then if you take out the tmv means that tmv will produce herring bone symptom okay like this just like a fish bone okay the particles of the tmv will be right i told you it's a rod shaped right so the rod shaped particles will be arranged like this so this is how you can identify in cytoplasm so you can identify whether it's a tmv or not because you know the time viral infection identification very difficult okay because even a, if it is producing characteristic symptom also it will be having complex viruses if you just take out the leaf curl virus it will either have 
so many viruses either tmv uh, tomato leaf curl virus chilli leaf curl virus right or cmv so so many will be there so we should be able to identify which is the dominant virus making the pan to go for this symptom so this is the where key identification tool will come usually people are going for the serological identification tools but still or even the pcr based but still for a bare identification so these are all helpful okay and but for virus the major thing is it will stop the excessive replication right okay any doubt any doubt if you have any doubt just ask me okay if you don't have doubt means i will start move forward okay so <clears throat> now we have studied the their infection right after infection we have studied how they are replicating right after replication we have studied how they are trying to move within cell right so that is within cell uh, neighboring cell they will move through the tubular or non tubular guided transmission right if it wants to move to entire plants means it's nothing but through source sink uh, route like you can call it as a phloem right so whatever the phloem route is there if it is a soil borne virus means right so it will try to move from the xylem okay if it is a uh, top or even the leaf borne right so inside borne means it will try to move from top to bottom right so then it will take the entry of phloem so that the stream will be there right so whatever the flood flood stream sorry food stream or even the water flow whatever it is there so through that it will try to make entry or it will try to uh, lo localize in the different parts of the host right so this is the movement so coming to transmission so especially with respect to i am concerned about the insect transmission right so trans transmission means as you know that each uh, insect will try to acquire the virus and it will try to put that virus into the host so it is nothing but it is acting as a vehicle that's it so it is just like acting like a bus to make the uh, virus let it enter into the host right so this is how the entry will make We can look over this. Okay. This is a feeding probes. The aphid has recognized the probe. How the insect will be host. taking the virus load. Typically moves to the underside of the leaf in order to start prolonged feeding. During feeding, the aphid stylet bundle reaches the sieve tubes, in which the meat mild yellowing virus is transported in the infected plants. The virus particles are passed through the aphid's food canal, along with the sap taken up while sucking upside down, into the esophagus, the stomach, and the gut. The virus particles cross the lining of the midgut, and in this way, enter the aphid's body fluid, its hemolymph. The virus particles circulate in the body cavity without multiplying. On their way, they also reach the principal salivary glands and the neighboring accessory salivary glands through which they enter. These viroliferous aphids transmit the beet mild yellowing virus from plant to plant along with salivary secretions. The aphid often remains a virus vector for life. For this reason, this type of virus transmission is termed persistent. Okay. So this is how the virus will try to enter into the insect body, right? So see, this is, if you take the aphid, so this is that stylet, okay? So what it will make says this is the cuticular lining, right? So the stylet will be there and it will make a channel, okay? So this in between the stylets, it will make a channel, right? So inside that the recognition particles will be there with respect to insect. So as i told that will be helper component right the hc pro especially this is present in the potivirus hc pro okay so this will tr try to carry the 
particular genome of the potivirus, you can call it as, right? It will be attached and it will be, this will have a recognition ability with respect to the cuticular lining of the stylet of the aphid, right? So this will go and attach and above this, there will be genome of the particular potivirus. So this will be carried along the line of the cuticular and it will be stuck. So this is how the recognition will take place. And with respect to cauliflower mosaic virus, it will be P2 recognition site. So it will attach, these are all coming, I told you, right? Uh, in case of cauliflower mosaic virus, P2 will help in the aphid recognition, right? P4 for the coat protein. So the same way, it will try to attach and it will recognize the, it will just give a, re a receptor, okay, for the cauliflower mosaic virus and it will be carried over to the uh, insect mouth. The same thing, the CMV will have a direct affinity towards the cuticular ring and it will just attach and it will be carried. So this is how the uh, canal or the channel will be taken place to have or to acquire the particular virus, okay? Okay. So as you know that we can easily categorize the vector transmission as either non-persistent, right, or semi-persistent, right, semi-persistent or persistent. In that persistent, either it may be circulative, propagative, or transporeal, whatever we can call it as, right? So like that, we can easily categorize the virus transmission with respect to insect vector, right? Okay, so coming to non-persistent, right, and persistent differentiation. So the specificity of vector for a virus will be low because you know that non-persistent means are semi-persistent, right? So just there is no that much specificity they required, even though I have shown you no aphid, but more or less if it, it can able to take the load of the similar viruses, okay? Even you know that there will be most of, more of strains also, right? So without that, it can take, but in case of persistent, it is highly specificity it will show. Then acquisition period. Acquisition period is nothing but the time required to take the virus into the body. That is said to be acquisition period. Once it is starting from there, the countdown starts from after entering its stylet, then how long it will take the uh, time to take the enter virus load that should be uh, transported because if it is taking one particle it doesn't uh, come uh, come to conclusion as acquisition period because a suitable amount of load should be taken then only we will call it as a acquisition period so that it can be easily transported to the host right so that should be uh, brief right that means last short time then in case of persistent it will take for long time right then latent period latent period means anyway now the virus has been engulfed but it has not transmitted to the host. So after taking the virus, how long it can stay without infecting or it, without injecting into the particular host? That time period is said to be latent period, right? But in non-persistent, the latent period cannot be there because once it has taken, it should go and immediately inject. Otherwise, the virus concentration will uh, never be infective, right? But in case of persistence, the latent period will be there. Once it takes, nah, it just it can move around, it can roam. After that, whenever it comes to that particular host, it can infect. Then the infection will take place. That is called latent period. Then inoculation period, right? That's what, after acquisition, right? How long it will take to inoculate, right? That means the once it enters into the healthy tissue, then how long it will take after piercing the tissue, how long it will uh, feed on that to make the virus into go into the particular virus that is called inoculation period right then here it is a brief and but here it is a long especially in persistent then persistence in vector how long it will be present in the vector in case of non persistent and semi persistent it will be short period of time as i told once it taken it should be delivered to the respective host otherwise it will be ineffective okay or non-infectious, then it will take days to weeks. Days to weeks, it will be there in vector. Okay, in leaf opus, it will be through their life uh, lifelong, they will be <laughs> persisting. Then transstadial transmission. <coughs> transstadial transmission means, as you know that there is a molting in the insect, right? So whether it is able to transmit the virus even through the different molting stages, right? So that is said to be transstadial transmission, okay? 
so even it can able to transmit during the molting stages also so like this it will be there right so if it is able to transmit means it will it is sorry it is not present in the non persistent or semi persistent but it could able to transmit in the semi sorry non uh, persistent insects okay or viruses then site in vector is usually a stylet or foregut right as you said in uh, saw in video but here it may be salivary gland right so if it is circulative means so re replication in vector right so it doesn't replicate inside the vector especially in non and semi persistent but here if it is circulative means it doesn't replicate right circulative means just throughout the insect body in, uh, inside that it will be traveling but it will not going to replicate but if it is a propagative means it is going to replicate right that's why it is called propagative then transporial means from one gener one generation to next generation it will be transmitting the viruses right so you can see in the leaf hoppers they are transporial in nature most of the cases so even in transporial they can if it is a propagative they can <coughs> sorry transporial means propagative viruses they can be they can transmit from generation to generation okay so this is about the particular virus and their insect characteristic right the same thing you can see in next also right the ap and uh, inoculation period acquisition period right then la latent period then uh, yeah the same thing just you can have a look over this right okay so if i if i want to categorize this thing with an example means right so you can take it down as non persistent right then semi persistent then persistent so characteristics as i said right so the same thing applies here so you can take down the <coughs> examples as most of the cucumber mosaic virus right sorry uh yeah papaya ring spot virus right then uh, you can take it down as cauliflower mosaic virus right i told you cauliflower mosaic is a bimodal right it can be transmitted in non persistent also even in the semi persistent also right but the insect will differ here it is a aphis species right <clears throat> here it might be mysis species right then you can have yeah so bean common mosaic virus can also be transmitted through a non persistent manner most of the hyphid right here most of the hyphid play a major role in transmitting in the non persistent manner right so if you just look into the semi persistent as i told cauliflower mosaic virus is one of the semi persistent then citrus cristosa virus right and you can have cauliflower mosaic virus right then rice tungro right which is a leaf hopper transmitted one then if you take out the persistent potato leaf roll virus right then rice dwarf virus right then barley yellow dwarf virus then mung bean yellow mosaic virus right then tomato leaf curl virus can anyone tell what is the insect transmitting potato leaf roll virus i told you last class right potato leaf roll virus can anyone affect right so it will be transmitting in a persistent manner right so these are all the examples and their characteristics how the insect and virus relationships are taking place right any question if you have any question just ask no questions
just ask me questions we have completed the class No doubt. I told you right. Only uh, he asked the question is why negative strand not capable of producing coded protein, right? The thing is <clears throat> just like so. I told you an example, right? It can be just like a. plus you can consider as a male or female like that whatever we are taking in fungi the same way so each respective function will be handled by particular strand so the positive strand is yeah, the only positive strand is having the capability to go for the transcription and it sorry translation and it can produce the protein but negative strand doesn't have the capability to go for production uh, go for the translation so it has the only capability to produce its complementary strand that is negative will be produced the producing the next complementary positive strands so that positive strands should be going for the production of lot of what you can call it as either uh, negative strands either replication sorry translation that's it uh that's what so if you have time you can read roger hull but it's a very bulky book okay so i'm telling you it's very bulky book so if you have molecular basis means you can anyway anybody can start uh, read any book okay it's not an issue but if you have less time then i don't recommend you to go to the roger hull right this is really it's a very good book okay so if you want you can take down right so roger hull right plant virology it's very good book so you can have and specifically you study the chapters which you require don't go very deep because he has given he compiled lot of research papers and he has generated that paper sorry book okay and uh, if you try to get cover back copy means you try and i think you will get soft copy in google also if you just search you will get once you try that and go with respect to only selected chapters right so indian author book okay i think uh, indian author book one is there colte is there right so colte i don't think you can easily complete that book right so within one and a half week or two weeks you can complete that book so if you want you can go for the colte book is there plant virology right by colte so you can refer that any other doubts if you have doubt just ask me okay otherwise we will conclude the session or with respect to plant pathology if you have doubts you can ask me no issue anything no doubts Sir, shall we conclude? I think I completed my class. Yes, sir. Okay, then. Anyway, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. So. if there are no any questions and then uh, padma kumar yes sir uh, please uh, conclude the session yes sir okay thank you uh, good evening to all
thank you so much, sir, for uh, guiding in such a way. You explained uh, the behavior of viruses in plants, histopathological changes induced by bioviruses in uh, plants, then uh, transmission transmission of viruses, vector relationship. Uh, on behalf of Department of Agriculture Extension and Communication, Postgraduate Institute, Mahatma Phule Kushi Vidyapit Rahuri, uh, I express heartfelt thanks to you, sir, uh, for uh, uh, guiding in such a nice way. Definitely, this will help will be helpful for all the uh, net ARS JRF SRF aspirants. Also, I uh, express uh, heart, heartfelt thanks to the, all the participants for patient listening. And thank you. Thank you to all. Okay, thanks. Sir. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Umar Kumar. We will uh, stop here. Okay, sir. Sure. Thank you.